Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and start talking about naming acids. Now, an acid uh, can be defined or just identified by the H being the very first element in the formula, meaning hydrogen being the very first element. Now, all acids contain hydrogen, and they contain an anion, anion or negatively charged ion. Now, we can look down here and we see that we have two types of anions. We have our polyatomic up here in nitrate, and then we have our monatomic down here in bromine. Okay, and what we see is that hydrogen can bond to either one. Now, the name of an acid is based off of an anion root. So it's based off of either here it would be nitrate and here it would be bromine. Now, there's two types of acids we're going to talk about. The first is a binary acid, and it contains only hydrogen and a monatomic anion, meaning hydrogen plus one other thing, because we see that binary bi means two. Now, when we name a binary acid, all we do is we put the prefix of hydro in the very beginning. We take the root of the anion's name, add ic to the end, and then put acid. For an example here, we have hydrogen plus one other thing, and that one other thing is bromine. And we see that we would take hydro as the beginning prefix. Then we put brome for bromine, add it to the end, and then acid. And this would be hydrobromic acid. Here we see that hydrogen is bonded to sulfur. So it's only bonded to one other thing. So it's a binary acid. So we add our hydro prefix, sulfur for sulfur, put ic at the end, and acid. So we get hydrosulfuric acid. Now guys, one thing you can look at here, it really doesn't matter the subscripts of the hydrogen, doesn't matter how many you have, because that has nothing to do with the name. The name only has to do with our anion, here bromine, and here sulfur. Now the next we're going to talk about is a ternary acid. And we see that the name, when we name ternary acids, what it is, it's basically hydrogen plus a polyatomic, meaning plus more than one, so two or three. Now, what we see is that all polyatomics, when they're bonding with that hydrogen, are going to either have an ATE ending or an ITE ending. And all we have to do to name an acid, a ternary acid, is all we have to do is we have to change the ate to an ic or the ite to an OUS. For an example here, we have hydrogen bonded to two other things, which is a polyatomic, and it's NO3. NO3 stands for nitrate, ending in ATE. So all we do is change that ATE to an IC, and we get nitric acid. Here we have H2SO3, hydrogen bonded to two other elements, and we see that we have sulfur and oxygen, and SO3 is sulfite, ending in ITE. So all you have to do to name it is change that ITE to OUS, and we get sulfurous acid. Now let's go ahead and do some practice. First thing we have to do whenever we're naming an acid is we have to figure out well, what type of acid is it. Here we have HBr. Now, we know it's a binary acid because it's hydrogen plus bromine. So all we do is we add the hydro prefix, brome for bromine, ic at the end, and acid. So hydrobromic acid. Next we have HClO3. And what we see is we have hydrogen bonded to a chlorine and three oxygens. So hydrogen plus more than one element to ternary acid. Now we go ahead and we see that ClO3 is chlorate. So we change the eight to ic and it becomes chloric acid. Next, we have hydrogen bonded to C2O4. Again, we see that it's a ternary acid. We go ahead, and we know that C2O4 is oxalate. It changed to oxalic acid, and we're done naming that. Moving on, we see that we have H3ASO3, which is arsenite, and we see that it's a ternary acid change that ite to OUS, and that's arsenous acid. Then we have H2SE, which SE is selenium, 
which is just an element, so it's hydrogen plus one other element. And you see that we have a binary acid, so we go ahead and we name it hydrosalinic acid. And lastly, we have hydrogen bonded just to sulfur, so we see that we change it's a binary acid, put that prefix of hydrosulfuric at the end, and acid. Now, one thing that we can notice is that just looking back very quickly at the names, we can see that any time we see that hydro, we know that's going to be a binary acid. So when we're writing the formulas for the acid, meaning we have the name and we want to write the formula, the first logical step, obviously, is we have to determine is it binary or is it ternary acid. So we know that binary is going to have that hydro, ternary is not going to have that hydro. After we figure out that if it's binary or ternary, we go ahead and we say, well, we find the anion contained in the acid. So if it's binary, we see that it's just an element. If it's a ternary acid, we go ahead and, hey, it's a polyatomic. Okay, and then the next thing we do is we just add enough hydrogen ions to balance the charge of the anion front. And you can write out beside here, all we're going to do is just crisscross. All right, so let's go ahead and practice. Now, to start off, we have to figure out what type of acid is it. We see that sulfuric doesn't have the hydro prefix, so it's a ternary acid. And all we do is we take the hydrogen, and we know that sulfate is SO4. It has a negative 2 charge, hydrogen is plus 1. We crisscross that, and we get H2SO4. Now, guys, if you wrote it like this with that one on the outside, no big deal. Uh, but you'll see it on the test like that. Okay, so moving on, we have nitrous acid. So it doesn't have the prefix, so we know that, hey, it's going to be um, a ternary acid. And we see that it's nitrous, meaning an OUS. So it started as nitrate. So all we're going to do is we have hydrogen bonded to nitrate, which is NO3. And we see that nitrate's negative one charge, hydrogen's plus one charge. So we just crisscross those and we should get H, or sorry, HNO2, nitrate, or nitrous is nitrite, so it's NO2. So we're going to go ahead and see it's going to be HNO2. All right, moving on, we have hydrofluoric acid. So we go ahead and we see that prefix of hydro. We know that that is going to be binary. So it's just hydrogen bonded to one other element. And we know that that element is going to be fluorine because it's fluoric. So we go ahead and look at fluorine, and we know that hydrogen's plus one. Fluorine's gonna be negative one because it is in group 17 on the periodic table. And we go ahead and crisscross those guys, and we get HF. Moving on, we see that we have hydrosulfuric acid. We have that hydro prefix, so we know it's binary, okay? And then we see it's sulfur is going to be what it's bonded to, so hydrogen plus one, Sulfur is negative 2 because it is in group 16. We crisscross those guys and get H2S. Then we have uh, phosphoric acid. It ends in IC. doesn't have a prefix, so it's a ternary acid. Now that IC tells us that it began as phosphate. Now phosphate is PO4, and it has a negative 3 charge to it, obviously bonding to hydrogen plus 1. We crisscross those guys, and we get should get H3PO4. And then lastly, we have formic acid. Okay, again, we know that it's ternary because it doesn't have a prefix. We see that it has an IC, so it should be formate to begin with. And we know that formate, we have hydrogen, which is plus one. Formate is COOH, which has a negative one charge, crisscross those guys, and we get HCOOH.